and we are moving along into the space industry together with AAC Clyde Space. Uh, CEO Luis Gomez, are you with me? Yes, I, I am here. Great. Can you hear me? Then I leave the attention over to you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, thank you for uh, your time. Um, so my name is Luis Gomez. I am the CEO of uh, AAC Clyde Space. Um, we we are a company that uh, makes space parts and uh, missions, and uh, we sell data and services from space. Um, we are largely organized in three business lines. Uh, so we have one dedicated to making products. Uh, these are uh, the parts that go into satellites, the onboard computers, the power systems, uh, and uh, the solar panels. And, and we do that, and uh, we design them, manufacture them on our locations across the world. We do it for customers, uh, but also we do it internally for our own satellites. We then have a business line dedicated to making uh, space missions, that is satellites that actually use the parts that we make on the on the product business line to actually build satellites that we sell to, to our customers around the world also. And we very much focus in the, in the up to 50 kilo spacecraft uh, size. Uh, but we, we sometimes we do different we do different things and our product um, uh, business line supplies uh, products and components uh, for satellites much bigger and much larger, including to, to go to the moon. And then we have a business line dedicated to, to actually sell data uh, and value-added services from data that we collect from our own satellites. So we have satellites in orbit, we collect data from them, we then, uh, and then we produce uh, data that we sell to other people, but we also produce value-added information. So we, we extract information from that. As you see here on this slide, uh, these three business lines are run by by president. These are fairly new appointments, so I, I just put them here just so so you all know the the, the gentlemen that are in charge of these right now. Um, and as a company, we have been uh, we have been uh, operating for more than twenty five years. We we are made up of several different sites uh, around the world, uh, and these sites have very different experiences. Uh, levels of experience, but uh, in general, we have operated for 25 years plus. We have uh, launched up to, to now more than 30 satellites. We have operations in Sweden, Netherlands, South Africa, US, UK, um, roughly about 190 employees. And uh, we own and operate uh, 10 satellites in orbit. Um, we tend to focus very much, uh, or in the past, we tended to focus very much on hardware. So building products and satellites, uh, but over the last few years we have been moving more towards the, the data and services. And part of that is because we see that that is where the, the market is growing. But it's also because margins, uh, our net margins, are much better when we start looking at data and services compared to hardware. Hardware is always a little bit less uh, less profitable than data and services. And as such, we have been starting to change our mix. Um, and moving away from being just a hardware company to also being uh, a data and services company. And as I mentioned, we are uh, we've got six sites around the world. Uh, well, actually, we've got seven now. Um, so we've got two uh, in Sweden, one in the United States, one in the Netherlands, one in Cape Town. Uh, we have one in Glasgow. Um, where we manufactured satellites. Most of our satellites are manufactured in Glasgow. And very recently, we actually opened uh, a new site in London. This is where we are focusing very much our um, data and services business. Uh, but that is also, we also do that in Washington. So, so we have a global presence uh, when it comes to all our product lines. Uh, we also have a few, so we, we have a few um, agreements in the, the Far East, in Japan and Korea with local um, companies that are reselling our products, reselling our our missions in there, but very much our objective is to have a global presence um, to sell our products, to sell our data and our services on space. In terms of our in terms of our uh, financial performance, uh, recently we we put out uh, our results for the year for the quarter. 
the first quarter of 2024. And we had uh, we announced that we have had a few issues with two of the satellites that we have. One, we have been paid uh, the insurance. The second one, we have also declared it a um, uh, failure. And that has depressed our revenue uh, intake from the beginning of the year. Uh, but uh, as we got paid our insurance, we actually had quite a healthy EBITDA uh, at the beginning of this year. So although our revenue was slightly uh, lower than what we wanted, our EBITDA was positive, and that actually continues our objective um, of uh, being EBITDA positive in 2024, uh, like we were ready in 2024, but bet more EBITDA positive, more positive this year. And this is supported uh, the, the continued growth of our business and our expected continued growth throughout, throughout 2024, is very much supported by our very strong order backlog. Uh, we, by the end of the first quarter, we had 654 million sec in uh, order backlog, what accounts for a large percentage of our uh, revenue for 2024, for the remaining of 2024. And as such, we maintain our, our guidance of uh, revenue between 430 and 500 uh, million sec, and added to targets between uh, 5 and 10% uh, of that. Now, going a little bit more in terms of where we are with our strategy as a company, our, our, com our company, as I, I mentioned earlier, we started very much by uh, selling components for satellites. That was the first business we were in. Uh, we then started building satellites using those components. Um, and later, we started to actually develop our own constellation and develop our own data service. And, and going forward, that's where we see uh, see our, our growth, uh, the bulk of our growth coming from space data as a service. So this is the selling of data and services from satellites that we own. Uh, this doesn't mean that we'll stop doing hardware. That is still very much the bedrock of our business. Uh, good quality hardware that we, we sell and that we use for our own satellites. That gives us the technology, the technological advantage uh, to actually then go and design very good missions for ourselves. So we'll continue to do hardware and we expect that business to continue to grow healthily over the, few, over the coming years. But we see a great opportunity to grow even further by doing, going into data uh, and services. And we have been doing already that, uh, very much uh, supported by the fact that as a society, we are faced with several threats and several uh, challenges. Uh, and those are driving very much the need for more data and better data. And what we see is that, uh, issues around sustainability, uh, and effectively monitoring our environment, making sure that what we are doing is not damaging the environment, but also dealing with the consequences of, uh, of past mistakes um, that are now leading to climate change. All of those are actually requiring more data and more information, and space is a great place to be. Uh, you are far away, you can take pictures of entire continents, of the entire world uh, quite quickly, and that gives us access to a lot of information on a global scale that is critical for managing our current environment. And that is that is aided because by the fact that we are now developing Internet of Things, that is this globally connected uh, world where everything is connected to, uh, to the internet. And what that is effectively giving us is much more control over our environment. But we can only control the environment if we actually know what's happening. So we need information before we are able to take decisions. And the same thing goes for the blue economy. The, the oceans are critical for, for life on Earth, um, critical for food supply, they are critical for our weather, they are critical for our commerce. Um, but we actually have very little information about things that happen on the oceans. And so more information is needed. And what these what is, um, needs for data are doing is demanding more information, more data from satellites. And, and we saw, because of that, we saw an opportunity to actually not just continue to supply satellites to people, to, to customers around the world uh, that want the information, that want the satellites, but also go in and search for other customers, the customers that uh, need the information, they need the data from satellites, but they, they have no desire to own a satellite. And, in that, and, and to do that, we actually created a model 
called Space Data as a Service, where we actually provide our customers just with information, with the data they need. We build the satellites, we own them, we operate them. That's something we know how to do very well. Uh, and then we just provide the data those customers need. And what this is doing is attracting many other users of data from space that would never in the past thought about actually using it in their day-to-day -day, um, business here on Earth. And so we created three models uh, to do this. One is a subscription model where people just say, I want an X amount of data for a certain period, usually on a renewable uh, mode. I have a few customers that are operating like that. We then have the, a model of paper access where people just say, I just want to access a bit of your data. Usually on our databases, we, we have quite big databases of data. And, um, and some of them are asking us, could I just access a certain amount of uh, data from your database to do some analysis, to do some long-term analysis. And then, of course, we also have another model that is secure capacity. This is when someone comes to us and says, I want reserved capacity uh, from one of your assets or several of your assets for an X amount of time, for a certain duration of time. Uh, and this gives the customer, of course, much more, uh, much more um, certainty of supply, uh, but also comes with different, different terms and conditions and different costs. And so we see the growth mostly coming from the subscription services uh, going forward. That's what many of our customers are really interested in. And currently, we operate a fleet of six satellites to dedicated to tracking ships. Um, and uh, and those satellites are actually are actually um, delivering uh, tracking ship. You can see the information. You can see the, the picture on the right. Uh, each dot each dot on that picture is a message that we pick up from ships. And so we can then provide that information to Coast Guards and navies around the world and, and other governments that uh, that actually will use that information to uh, do surveillance of the oceans and the seas, uh, to do uh, tracking of illegal activities. But they will also do statistics about who, where cargo is going where, where. And many commercial organizations will then use this information to actually uh, estimate how much commerce is happening, how much trade is happening on the specific commodity. Um, and we have been developing also some other applications around this. So it's not just about the data, it's also what you do with the data. So we have been, we have been running these, uh, these um, work with, uh, offshore, with the offshore industry to actually uh, know how we can help them in their day-to-day -day management of their facility. Um, at the same time, we are we currently also operate a fleet of three hyperspectral data uh, satellites. So what they are doing is collecting information uh, about forests, about crops around the world, detect uh, a variety of um, events and problems. I, I give you an example at the bottom. This is actually using a different technique that we are going to use in the future. Uh, it very much illustrates what it is done. You take certain pictures on the on the left side. The two pictures on, on the left side are the, the images that the satellite capture. And then on the right side, you have the images where we process the data and we detect that there is a problem in a certain region of this forest. And this is very much what we do with this satellite. But what we are building now is a constellation that supports maritime activities and supports forestry and farming activities around it. And going forward, what we are looking is how do we evolve this constellation. So this year, we launched another satellite for ourselves called EMEA-1, built in, uh, in Sweden. Uh, and this satellite is the first one in a new type of maritime service. Um, is an evolution of the current ship tracking satellite that will now not only allow tracking, but will also allow communication. So it introduces a whole new range of services. You are able not only to see where ships are, but also communicate back with them and talk to them and make sure they are who they say they are, they are doing the right things. Um, and at the same time, we're developing our next generation of Earth observation. We, we identify the gap in the supply of information for agriculture and forestry, and we are filling that gap. So we are developing satellites for that gap. And you can see on the right hand side of this, of this slide, um, our plan going forward. So, so we are on track. Uh, we started uh, on AIS VDS uh, capability right now. We are demonstrating that this year. This is the new maritime service. And at the same time, we are building 
we have started the building of our next generation of Earth observation satellites for agriculture and forestry. And I'll just give you a little bit more context of what those satellites do. And, and focusing uh, a bit on the Earth observation side. So we call our constellation, our new constellation for, uh, for Earth observation, uh, we call it Cyclops. And it is based on a new design of satellites um, that we have been developing and we have been working on. Um, but very much what it delivers is space data as a service for agriculture, forestry, and natural resources. Um, and it was designed to be a very cost-effective solution. It is compatible with existing systems, but offers quite a big advantage in terms of price and flexibility. And we are currently building the satellite. Uh, the first one of these satellites is the, the first of four. And, uh, and this satellite will be launched in 2025. We'll be deliver data uh, images with uh, 1.5 meter resolution in seven different bands. So uh, the, the traditional red, green, blue, and near infrared, plus a few additional bands. And the objective is that we can actually take a picture of any field in the world every day. So we'll be able to actually have a daily revisit, a global coverage. Um, and in that way, we can actually monitor and we can support uh, landowners, uh, farmers around the world uh, monitoring their crops so that they can actually use much more efficient methods, uh, use less pesticides, less water, uh, and effectively reducing their costs and increasing their efficiency without damaging the environment. And, and as I say, this is a, we identified one part of the market that uh, to, to do this that is currently underserviced. So I won't go into the, the details of the bands, but as you can see, it's compatible with other systems. The, the Sentinel-2 system currently is uh, operated by the European Space Agency. Uh, and effectively, what, what we are now engaging uh, is with uh, the farming world and with the forestry world. We have, we have quite a lot ongoing, a lot of discussions and a lot of conversations and, uh, and projects ongoing, with, particularly in the forestry, forestry uh, industry. Uh, we, are, we are building uh, the use cases around these, uh, these data. And the objective is not only to actually sell data, but sell the services that come with it. So this is just to give you a flavor of what we are doing in terms of our own constellation. So just to conclude, um, we are we are building our um, we are building our business. Uh, we are growing our business, uh, not only with the hardware business that we have done traditionally for several years and we are very successful at, but we are now actually growing our space data as a service uh, business, um, and we we have the we can do it because we have the, the knowledge, we have the, we have the experience, we know how to build that. And so we see a great opportunity to actually grow our business, to grow our company, uh, using our experience and our heritage from hardware to build a very successful data and services business. And I'll complete here. I'll stop here. I don't know if there are any questions. Thank you so much for that presentation, Luis. Um, I think we should start off by, um, if you could describe for us how, how the recent turbulent macro period has been affected the space industry, um, perhaps in regard to the rising in interest rate and the uncertain uh, geopolitical situation. Um, how are you handling this? I, I... As always, as always, the problems have two, two sides. Um, and I, I'm always, I say, unfortunately, the space business tends to, or fortunately, uh, depending on your point of view, uh, tends to benefit from uh, big international uh, upheavals and uh, periods of uncertainty. Uh, with, with the kind of current issues that we see, particularly with security around in Europe and in other regions of the world, there is a huge demand for information and for more for more up to date information. Uh, so many space companies that we are not we are not really in the business of, for instance, um, military uh, information systems. I know many of the companies that work with us, and some of them are our customers for components and uh, 
and subsystems or their satellites, they, they've actually had much more success now. They are actually having a pretty successful time. Um, but of course, this comes with, uh, with uh, the other side of this coin is that uh, the uncertainty, financial uncertainty, makes it harder to get financing for many projects. Things take longer. Uh, this said, we, we haven't seen a, a huge impact. We saw, for instance, a bigger impact during the, the pandemic. Uh, after that, actually, we saw quite a pickup of interest uh, on products and subsystems. Last year, we had a very good year uh, supplying subsystems and components to customers. Um, so so uh, even if it's not uh, not the ideal uh, situation around the globe, uh, I think for the space business as a, as a whole, has been uh, has been fairly good. Okay, I see. Um, and in terms of the competitive landscape, um, could you quickly touch upon that and also how, how, how um, what sets you apart from, from your main competitors? So, the space industry is quite competitive. Uh, there, are many, uh, there are many companies around the world. There are many, uh, some of them supported by government. Um, so, so we see both in the hardware, but also on the services and data, probably less on the services and data. Uh, there is less competition on that, uh, but on the hardware, there is quite a substantial amount of uh, competition. Nevertheless, uh, last year we were present, our components, our subsystems actually were in about a quarter of all the small CubeSats and nanosatellites launched. So, so that actually tells you that uh, we have been very successful in that competitive environment. Um, in, terms of, um, in terms of why we are uh, so competitive, it comes down to experience, it comes down to the technology. We own a lot, we develop a lot of the technology that we use, if not all of it. Uh, we are very, uh, we have long experience in developing, using, designing, manufacturing, and launching uh, equipment into space. But that is a pretty difficult thing to do. Many, many of, uh, many of our competitors have very little experience, and you learn by doing it. So we have built this long um, heritage of uh, successful, successful systems in space, uh, and that does set us aside. So when we go into our services, into our data business, um, we have all that, all that knowledge, all that background of actually building successful space systems. Uh, so that does set us aside. I see. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Luis Gomez, CEO of AAC Clyde Space. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.